tie into the volunteer connection. Coming up on News Center 5, concerts at the Dome may no longer be a thing of the past. And Donald Regan says he knew nothing about the diversion of arms sale funds to the Contras. In the weather, heading our way, a little rain, a little snow. And in sports, the battle of the unbeaten says Liverpool faces Henniger. Now, Bob Kirk, Liz Ayers, and Mark Cooper on sports. This is News Center 5. Good evening. Here's what's going on. It has taken five years, but tonight, Syracuse University and City Hall have settled their dome disagreement. The dispute centered on the tax status of the carrier dome, but now the argument is over. The agreement once again opens the door for the dome to realize its full potential. To benefit our the announcement was made, the details worked out, the tax problem resolved. The city will keep the $1.2 million already paid to them by the university in back taxes. The city will then exempt the dome from any future property tax. And the city will receive a yearly minimum of $100,000 generated by a 75 cent surcharge on each ticket for major non-educational events staged at the dome. For my part, the most important aspect of our action is that it clears the way for the city and the university to work together on additional projects for the mutual benefit of the university and the city. The agreement has started the wheels in motion for more concerts at the Dome. For the potential audience, that's good news. I think it's good. I think that um, it'll bring a lot more people into Syracuse. I'm glad they settled the dispute because I thought it was kind of crazy to begin with. That's pretty cool. Like Alice Cooper came last night, it should have been up into the Dome. For the community, the benefits go far beyond the cultural aspects. Over the first five years of the dome operation, the concert revenue alone, uh, an economic impact, uh, was over $15 million. Uh, that resulted in $1.1 million in sales taxes that came back to Onondaga County. So that's, that's, that's the economic impact of it. So now the way is clear for more major events at the dome, possibly as early as next spring. From the political beat tonight, sources close to Assemblyman Mel Zimmer confirm Zimmer will run for Onondaga County Executive, whether or not Republican John Mulroy seeks re-election. However, that may not be the last word on the subject. Other Democrats say Zimmer is very interested in the job, but may still be testing the political waters to determine whether he has enough support. Zimmer has quietly been soliciting support among Democrats for the past few weeks. The U.S. Surgeon General has a new message tonight for smokers and non-smokers. His report says cigarette smoke poses a health threat to all. For the first time, the Surgeon General says non-smokers can develop lung cancer, heart disease, and respiratory ailments by just inhaling smoke. The report also adds that children of parents who smoke suffer more respiratory problems. In our opinion, this has become not a personal matter anymore. This is a societal issue. The Tobacco Institute attacked the report as a political document, not a scientific one, but some smokers say they try to be considerate of others. We have a fan in our office, so I try to blow the smoke away from other people. Uh, we don't smoke if we're in a group that, if we're out to lunch and there's a group of people that don't smoke, I don't usually smoke. On the other hand, health groups are using the report as justification for wide-scale smoking bans. Tomorrow will be a day off for 550 students at the Faith Heritage School in Syracuse. Today was a day off at one Madison County school. The reason in both cases, a flu bug that's sweeping the area. Experts say they can't tell which flu bug it is and prescribe the old mix of rest, fluids, and patients for those bitten by the bug. A prisoner at Auburn Prison has become the first state inmate to receive an experimental drug to battle AIDS. Only known as John Doe, the inmate began receiving the drug AZT at University Hospital. Two weeks ago, the prisoner threatened to go on a hunger strike if not given permission to take the drug. Doctors at University Hospital say at least two more inmates with AIDS at Auburn are under evaluation to take the drug. President Reagan wants Congress to give limited immunity to former national security aides Oliver North and John Poindexter. They are the two men who apparently know the most, but are saying the least about the diversion of funds from sales of arms to Iran to the Contras in Nicaragua. But right now, key congressmen and senators don't appear willing to grant immunity. Meanwhile, White House Chief of Staff Donald Regan told the Senate Intelligence Committee today that no one authorized the diversion of money to the Contra rebels. Here's more from Patricia Sagan. 
The president's chief of staff was grilled for more than four hours by the committee. When he emerged, he was as adamant as he's always been that he never knew about diversion of funds to the Contras. Right. I was under oath testifying, and uh, I testified that I did not know of any diversion of funds from uh, the proceeds of the sales of arms to Iran to the Contras. And I don't know any such can, thing. Can you... And I don't believe the president of the United States knows any such thing. Well, but he left at least two members dissatisfied. We'd be better off uh, uh, for Mr. Regan to uh, resign in the interest of the country. And he says he knew nothing about it, and I find that unbelievable, but he's very convincing. Nevertheless, the two committee chairmen described Regan's testimony as candid and useful, a refreshing change in style for the White House. The White House could have uh, uh, invoked executive privilege. I compliment the president for not doing that. What the investigation still lacks is the obvious key, testimony from the men who knew, former NSC head Poindexter and his deputy Colonel North. The two invoked the Fifth Amendment at both Senate and House hearings to protect themselves. Today, in a surprise move, the White House called on Congress to grant the pair limited immunity so they can testify without fear of legal reprisal. This is essential because of the controversy surrounding the Iranian matter. There is absolute need to get on with the business of government. Immediate reaction? Republicans were more inclined to go along with such a deal than the Democrats. Frankly, it would be the smart thing to do, it would be the right thing to do, this matter would be over very quickly. But lawmakers are now gearing up for their next investigation in January. Today, the new members of the Senate Select Committee were named to investigate Iran scam. Their chairman will be former Watergate committee member Daniel Inouye, Democrat of Hawaii. Over the next few months, the public can look forward to the same kind of televised hearings they saw during the Watergate era. This nation's credibility and its standing in the world involved here. So. Patricia Sagan, News Center 5. And late tonight, Senate Intelligence Committee Chairman David Durenberger says it's clear that whoever diverted Iran arms sales money to the Contras acted without proper authority. And Durenberger says now that person is Oliver North, the fired National Security Council aide. Durenberger commented after listening to testimony today from White House Chief of Staff Regan and tonight from Secretary of State Schultz. It's clear after today uh, where we have the testimony of the, uh, the uh, Secretary of State and the uh, person closest to the President of the United States that um, whoever pulled it off uh, did it without uh, proper, appropriate, uh, uh, whatever authority, and that person is, uh, by all other evidence uh, <coughs> that adduced in here over the last two and a half weeks, that person is Ollie North. CIA Director William Casey had been scheduled to appear before the Senate panel today, but he remains hospitalized tonight in stable condition after suffering two minor brain seizures. Casey underwent more tests today. He's described as mentally clear. Liz? Bob, in other news, a convicted American spy has been sentenced to life in prison, but the attorney for Ronald Pelton says he'll appeal that sentence. Pelton, a former National Security Agency employee, was found guilty last June of selling defense secrets to the Soviets. A fighter aircraft took off from Griffith Air Force Base today, headed for a Canadian air base. Before reaching its destination, the Air Force F-106B crashed. Happily, the two pilots, both captains in the U.S. Air Force, ejected before the plane went down and escaped with minor injuries. It's not known yet why the plane crashed. There's been a halt in some troops going up to Fort Drum. The reason? Not enough housing. The Pentagon says there isn't ample off-base housing for troops, but says that doesn't change their commitment to activating and deploying the 10th Mountain Division at Fort Drum. It's estimated that by 1990, about 10,000 troops will be stationed there. And just ahead on News Center 5, both city and